this video, I wanted to show you what a full day of eating can look like, aiming for 425 grams of carbs and 28.95 calories. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jody, and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health, and your life. I haven't done one of these since my reverse diet, I think. We are now into a building phase, so my calories are way up. I am aiming for 28.95 a day, but more importantly, I'm actually really focusing on macros at the moment. I thought I'd make a video to kind of explain why and at the same time show you how I'm hitting them. Now, if you are someone that is just starting out tracking macros or if you are a beginner to all of this, if your goal is body recomposition, if your goal is just fat loss or weight loss, then don't stress so much about hitting your macros perfectly at the start. Get used to just aiming to hit that protein target, which is the most important thing, and then your calorie target. At the start of your journey, or even a year or two in, you have so much more flexibility than you think, and you can make so much progress without worrying about being perfect with your macros. I'm definitely not making this to stress you out or overwhelm you or say that you have to do this to make progress, but it could be something to think about if you keep going and into the future as you get more advanced with your training. And also if your goals kind of change, like my goal now is way more extreme than it used to be. Training with an athlete mentality, I am becoming an athlete. I'm not just doing this for fun anymore. Not that I was ever really doing it for fun, but I was kind of doing it just because I did enjoy training. I wanted to hit some strength goals. Also, I became a personal trainer and I kind of had to improve my body composition to look the part, right? I know some people will say you don't have to look the part to be a good personal trainer. That is true, but I wanted to. Anyway, with where I'm at, tracking calories and protein for me is really easy. I can do that without even really trying. I like to have a challenge. I like to be constantly improving because that is where progress is made, right? So if you're someone that has trouble hitting protein, worry about that first before you worry about hitting carbs and fat. If you're someone that finds hitting your protein and your calories really easy, then maybe it's time to start looking at what else you can improve because again, it's aiming for that continuous improvement which produces the best progress. And I will say this as well, if you have a goal to build muscle, then eating enough carbs does become a lot more important. Whether that goal is to build muscle whilst losing body fat, so body recomposition, or building muscle whilst gaining minimal body fat, aka eating in a surplus. And what I said before still applies. If you're a beginner, if you're starting out with the body recomposition process, then hitting protein and calories is fine. But as you get more into the process, then you do want to start paying more attention to your carb intake. Now, the main reason for this is carbs are the best fuel for your training. And if your goal is to build muscle, then your performance in your training is really going to dictate the results you get. If you can perform better, you're going to be able to build more muscle. And so it ties back to then eating enough carbs to fuel that performance. The other benefit to upping your carb intake, especially in a surplus and keeping your fats lower, is that when you are in a surplus, your body finds it easier to store fat as fat. My goal right now is to build as much muscle as possible. I'm training super hard and I have noticed a massive difference in my training intensity since upping my carbs. I'm currently aiming for 425 grams of carbs a day, 130 grams of protein and 75 grams of fat. And with all this as well, you wanna be careful not to lower fats to nothing because fat is essential for the body. You do want to be eating a minimum amount and to just keep it simple, obviously this is going to vary on each individual. A simple way to calculate it is to just aim for one gram per kilogram of body weight as like a minimum target. So because my calories are quite high at the moment, I'm really making more of an effort to get more food in earlier in the day. If you've watched some of my previous full day of eating, so you will know I have a tendency to kind of 
fast for some of the morning and eat more food later in the day because that's what I like to do. When you have so many calories to play with, I'm already going to have a lot of food left for later and I need to eat a lot of food earlier in the day as well. Usually I start my day with a coffee at the cafe and some sparkling water and get my work done still but then I will start eating my breakfast earlier. I've also increased the size of my breakfast, which I'm going to show you soon. Today is a training day, but it is a weekend. I usually like getting my workouts done in the morning still. I will go to the cafe, have a coffee, do some work, have my pre-workout snack, which I will show you later, and then go to the gym, get my workout done, come home and eat. On Saturdays now, I like to do this thing where I kind of have a slower start to the morning, just sit in stillness, watch the sunrise with a coffee and then we head to gym a bit later. So I'm about to eat my first meal of the day. It's actually two courses now. So you would have seen what I love to eat for breakfast in my other videos. It pretty much never changes. I have my oats with Greek yogurt and protein powder, but now I have increased the portion size of the oats because my carb target is so high. I need to get more in. And then in addition to that, when I was on the retreat in May, I became friends with this French girl who was lovely. And we did this thing when we woke up on the boat, we would have a cookie together with our coffee. So because my calories have been high since getting back from the retreat, I've actually continued that tradition. I'm about to have my pre-breakfast coffee, which has milk in it, so calories. I have full cream milk as well, so it's a lot of calories. And now I have a chocolate chip gluten-free cookie with it. I'm still doing the gluten-free thing because it makes me feel better. And yeah, we start the day with a cookie at the moment. Now remember, there are no rules, right? You are allowed to start your day with cake or a cookie or whatever, if it fits. And as long as for 80% of the time, you're eating mostly whole nutrient-dense foods. So it is about two and a half hours since I had my breakfast and it's time to eat again. I am not hungry, but I'm eating now because I've got to hit my carb target and if I save them all till later, I'm not going to hit it. When you're in a building phase, it is likely you're going to have to eat at times when you're not hungry. My hunger has been pretty high actually on these calories, which I'm surprised by, but there are still definitely times where I'm eating and I don't really feel like it, which is now. The other reason I want to eat now though is because I'm about to go train and I have found that having a pre-workout snack is actually helping me with my energy during the workouts in terms of sustaining it for longer so I can push myself harder for longer. And that is key right now for me, as I said before, the better my performance is in my training, the better results I'm gonna get in terms of muscle growth. I need to be fueling my workouts with the right carbs to be able to keep that intensity up in my workouts. And I say right carbs in this context, I mean eating carbs that make you feel good during your workout. So for me, that is not fruit. I find that makes me want to throw up. What I have found for me that is working really well is having something light, easily digested, and that looks like rice cakes with jam on top. And I add a bit of salt as well, so it tastes nice. And that keeps me going throughout my workout without me feeling sick. All right, so we just got back from gym. I am glad I had those rice cakes beforehand because they definitely helped towards the end of my workout in terms of how hard I could push myself. And now we want to eat some more carbs and some protein because that is the best thing to eat after a workout. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you will remember I have had a gut issue and it is a lot better, but there are still some issues to resolve. So I'm actually starting another gut protocol soon because I still have these lingering issues, which showed up on a recent blood test. I have to be careful what carbs I eat because I don't want to aggravate it more and different carbs will do that, especially when you're eating 425 grams of them a day. So what that looks like for me is eating a lot of white basmati rice as my main carb source. So at least 50% of my carbs at the moment are coming from this because this rice, white basmati type, doesn't have some of the fibers that other rice does that tends to worsen symptoms if you do have a gut issue. So I'm just cooking some of this now. What I'm actually gonna have it with is maple syrup. I know it sounds weird, but it tastes really good. 
And maple syrup is like a lot of calories for little volume. So it helps me get those extra carbs in easily. It's also a really good quick source of glucose, which is perfect for post-workout. All right, so lunch is ready. We have the rice with maple syrup. And then we have some turkey mince cooked in garlic and pepper and salt, and then sauerkraut and carrot and another coffee. This is still daylight and the lighting is good. I thought I would explain my dinner. Basically, I'm having very similar to my lunch. I'm having rice again. I'm having chicken mince instead of turkey mince. I'm having veggies. I'm just cooking it a bit differently so it comes out different and it's not exactly the same. So I get that variety, but I can still keep it really simple and I'm still using foods that my body responds really well to. And what I mean by that is I eat the food, it makes me feel good. I don't get any gut symptoms. I'm not bloated after eating it and it just works for me. So I'm not gonna have the maple syrup with my rice tonight because I wanna make more of a like curry sauce to have on top of it and it's not gonna go and I don't need it anyway because I'm gonna keep my carbs without having it again. Plus, I don't really feel like a sweet dinner because I'm gonna have my dessert afterwards, which is going to be some chocolate and then I'm going to have another bowl of oats with some protein powder and some yogurt again to finish off my macros for the day. Now to hit my macros so closely and then also my calories, like my calories are high. I probably wouldn't eat this amount of food naturally throughout the day if I wasn't tracking and that's the reason I am tracking. So to make sure I'm eating enough in my meals and they're spaced out well enough to actually allow me to hit my calories without feeling sick. I literally organize myself, like that is all, right? I don't leave it to the end of the day to log what I've eaten. I log what I plan to eat at the start of the day and I'm flexible around it. Just say someone invited me out for dinner, I've already logged my breakfast and my lunch and my dinner that I thought I would have. I would just cancel out the dinner I thought I would have and log whatever I had instead. But if that doesn't happen, then I've already got a meal plan to kind of follow and I know I'm gonna be able to hit my macros pretty closely if I just eat what I've already logged for the day. And if I had more time on my hands as well, then maybe I would make something a bit more fancy or different for dinner, but I really don't care. I do enjoy most of the meals I eat. If I don't enjoy every single meal that I have for the day, that doesn't really bother me anymore either because I have those other meals that I do get to enjoy. And that is why I always save my favorite meal, my dessert, for the end of the day because I love that, I look forward to it, and then if I do have to eat something I don't really want during the day to hit my macros, then it's fine. At the moment, after tracking everything I've planned to eat for the day, I'm still 100 calories short, so I'm short on carbs and fat. So what I'm gonna do is simply bump up the serve of rice to help increase my carbs. And then I'll probably bump up some of the peanut butter that I have in my oats to help get my fats up. And then that'll help me hit my calories. And it works the other way. Just say I was way over, then I would subtract a little bit of something from my dinner to make it fit better. The last thing I wanna say is I really hope this video shows you that you don't have to be scared to eat carbs. I know I kept myself stuck for years because my carbs were simply too low. Number one, I wasn't following a proper training program and I didn't know what I was doing in the gym. So my form was like not right and I wasn't actually pushing myself hard enough, using the right muscles, all of that. And then number two, I wasn't fueling my training properly because I was keeping my carbs far too low. Anyway, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with my body over the next few months because we are in a building phase and I do expect to be gaining some body fat along with muscle, hopefully gaining minimal body fat though because I am hitting my macros on point and I'm training really hard. Yeah, my macros are going to be going up even more, so that is crazy to me. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what the meals look like once I've made them, but I wanted to film this while the lighting was still good. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if that is the case, I will see you in the next video. All right, so that is how dinner turned out. It's got chicken mince, tomato, spices, peas, pumpkin, and I think that's it. And then on the rice, and then I've got cheese to add on top. That's just portioned out to help me hit my fats. And yeah, so that is the chocolate I am going to have. I'm obsessed with this one at the moment. And I just weigh out around 40 to 50 grams, depending on what fits. 
And then this is the dessert oats that I like to have, I guess, or the ones I have before bed. And I add peanut butter to these ones to get my fats up if I need it. If I don't, then I don't add it. And I also add some protein powder and Greek yogurt again.